My name is Jeff Morgan. I am from Dallas, Texas. And once again, I'm going to give a short, short tutorial on how to file a complaint with the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. The State Commission on Judicial Conduct is supposed to be an independent Texas state agency responsible for investigating allegations of judicial misconduct and judicial disability. And maybe they do investigate, but they really very seldom seem to rule against the judge. Uh, there's no possible way that we could have misconduct or judicial disability taking place in our courts. But anyway, if you go at the top up here, you'll see www.scjc.texas.gov. That gives you the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. Usually at the top here, they have a little announcement or something like that here. It's a memoriam of uh, Honorable Ruben G. Reyes of the 72nd District Court. Go down a little bit further and you can see they give the public statements at times or frequently asked questions about the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. I'd invite you to look at them. Uh, they do have some disciplinary actions. The following are public sanctions which were issued by the commission. And um, you can actually take a look in, and I guess you can inspect them. I've never actually done this part of it except when they're published online. And they do publish them online as well. Uh, I don't know to, if they have something different at the office or if you can just find them all online or what. Maybe I told a little lie. Maybe I exaggerated just a little bit too much because every so often, every so often, like it looks like about once a month or once every two months, there is a disciplinary action taken by the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. So most recently in July of 2021, Honorable Paul Lilly uh, had a public admonition and order of additional education on appeal to special court of review. Uh, in June, we have the Honorable Thomas G. Jones, the Justice of the Peace, Precinct 1, Place 1, Dallas, Dallas County, Texas. And you can see the case number here. In June, he was given a public reprimand and an order of additional education, a special court of review opinion. Now we also have the Honorable Frederica Phillips. She's a 61st Judicial District Court, Houston, Harris County, Texas. April 9th, 2021, she was given a public warning and an order of additional education. Now from my perspective, from what I've seen in these courts, this these disciplinary actions should be a lot more robust than what we see right now. But anyway, I'm going to just talk more about how to file the complaint. So as I said, come to www.scjc.texas.gov and you can hit here how to file a complaint and when this comes up it tells you what exactly you can do you can't file a complaint by telephone fax or email from the complaint form on this website you may request a complaint form by calling uh, this number you may also write a letter outlining your complaint which should provide the following information and if you do the, just write down a report and then send it to the State Commission on Judicial Conduct P.O. Box 12265 Austin, Texas 78711. So to honestly, for me, this is a little bit, um, it just takes too much time to do this stuff. I prefer the online complaint form. And if you go to the online complaint form, what you'll see is that you have a complaint form right here. This is uh, public information, the submitter information, the date of birth, address. So if I'm the one submitting something, I need to do that. And I also need to put down information about the judge. Uh, what if you look here what type of court he's in what county he's in and then a bunch of just a bunch of diff different courts will appeal and then you come down here and you actually get to choose a judge uh, the judge that you are complaining about case information if you have it um, attorney information and let me just say this that you do not have to be a litigant to make this complaint you can be a member of the public and also file this complaint which is what i'm going to be showing right now in just a moment you have the opposing attorney details witness information De witness one details witness two information um, details of the complaint the alleged the date of the alleged misconduct of the judge factual details of your complaint against the judge so what i've already done I've, I've eliminated some of this personal information because of the privacy that i want to extend to the different people that i mentioned here but i already have a complaint form filled out so as you see right here this is my name jeffrey s morgan uh, date of birth i kept out address my city is dallas everybody knows that because i always tell everybody where i'm from dallas i kept out my zip email and daytime phone the district court in travis county the 455th district court now the judge that i'm filing a complaint against is judge dustin howell and justin howell violated the open court doctrine in my opinion i believe he violated the texas state constitution he violated the open court doctrine 
And he also violated the background and legal standards, the public right to access remote hearings during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this was actually authored by, primarily by Roy Ferguson. This goes back to March 13th, 2020. And they talk about the emergency orders regarding the COVID-19 state of disaster. But one of the things that they keep emphasizing is this. This emergency order is recognition of the public's right to reasonable notice and access to court proceedings, both criminal, both civil and criminal, is consistent with traditional practice in Texas state courts with federal and state precedent as discussed below. So he talks about Supreme Court has held that the that the press and the public have a similar independent right under the First Amendment to attend all criminal proceedings in both federal and state courts. And that also gets extended to the civil courts. I believe they said up here it's under um, the 14th Amendment. But anyway, there is a public right to access in civil cases under the First Amendment. Courts must ensure and accommodate public attendance at court hearings. Now, in this case with uh, Judge Dustin Howell, he did at the beginning. There was a three-segment trial, hearing, whatever you want to call it, that took place. And the first segment was fine. Everybody was allowed to be there. But then Judge Howell, Judge Dustin Howell, did something that was very concerning, something that violated his duties as a judge. He shut off the live stream feed. He shut off the feed to both Zoom and to YouTube. And in other words, what he did, um, he denied us our rights to watch and monitor our courts, to attend the courts. As you look right here, uh, Judge Ward Ferguson says the presumption of openness adopted by the Supreme Court must be overcome in order to close hearings to the public. That's exactly what he did. Judge Dustin Howell closed the hearing to the public for no reason whatsoever. Because of the constitutional right at issue, it belongs to the public rather than the parties, all closures or restrictions of public access to such hearings must satisfy the same heightened standards handed down by the Supreme Court in Waller regarding criminal cases, even when agreed to by the parties. Thus, while the court may consider the party's agreement while evaluating a request for closure, that agreement alone is not sufficient to warrant closure. The First Amendment right belongs to the public, not to the parties. The parties cannot waive it by agreement. And nor can the judge overrule it because he wants to be a tyrant judge. Because he thinks that as his status as Judge God, uh, that he can just do whatever he wants to. He cannot do this, and yet often it happens. Um, it is the court's affirmative burden to ensure meaningful and unfettered access to court proceedings. In fulfilling this burden, the court must take all reasonable measures necessary to ensure public access. Lack of access to a single hearing is suppression, or even a portion of a single hearing, voir dire, is enough to mandate reversal and a new trial. Now what Judge Dustin Howell, the time of Judge Dustin Howell did, he did stop the hearing, as I said, between segment one and segment two. He did not allow it to be broadcast. And uh, so therefore what he was actually conducting was a star chamber. He was a, conducting a star chamber. He was disallowing the public the, their rights to actually watch and attend this hearing. Um, uh, if, even if a judge is physically in a courtroom for the virtual hearing, it is the court's burden. It is the court's burden to ensure public access to each hearing and take reasonable measures to remove the barriers there too. Choosing not to provide re reasonable and meaningful public access to the remote public hearings at this time may equate to constitutional error and mandate reversal. Now this is what I will be filing with the State Commission on Judicial Conduct against uh, Judge Dustin Howell. Now, if you go down to the witness details right here, you have the first uh, witness, and I'm, I'm sure they don't mind me using their name because they've also filed a lawsuit against this judge. As far as I am aware, they filed a lawsuit. So what did this person witness? He witnessed that the judge did not publicly broadcast the entire hearing via YouTube, and it was in violation of the Texas State, Con the Texas Constitution, the Open Courts Doctrine, and the background and legal standards public right to access remote hearings during COVID-19 pandemic. I, it appears that this is very limited as far as what you can add in, so I just kept it at that. The same thing with witness number two. So as you'll see right here, these are the details of my complaint. The date of the alleged misconduct took place on July the 14th, 2021. The factual details of my complaint, which I had a lot more leeway that I could write more. So I basically just said I was a court watcher in a three-segment hearing that was broadcast online in accordance with Article 1, Section 13 of our Texas Constitution, the Open Court Doctrine, and Judge Roy Ferguson to the 394th District Court background and legal standards of public right to access remote hearings during COVID-19 pandemic. The document states that it is clear that it is the public's right to attend all court proceedings, except in very limited cases. But the presumption of openness adopted by the, by the Supreme Court must be overcome in order to close hearings to the public. 
Because the constitutional right at issue belongs to the public rather than the parties, all closures or restrictions of public access to such hearings must satisfy the same heightened standards handed down by the Supreme Court and Waller regarding criminal cases, even when agreed to by the parties. Thus, while the court may consider the parties' agreement while uh, first evaluating a request for closure, the agreement alone is not sufficient to warrant closure. The amendment belongs to the public, not to the parties, and the parties cannot waive it by agreement. And as I believe I said earlier, nor can the judge just deprive the public of their rights. This is abusive. This is tyrannical. This is a judge that is overstepping his bounds. This is a judge that is violating the open court doctrine, section article 113 of our Texas state constitution and the background and legal standards for the public right to access remote hearings. Doesn't make a difference what kind of judge you are. Even if you think that you are a judge God, you do not get this right to do this. So it is the court's affirmative burden to ensure meaningful and unfettered access to court proceedings In fulfilling this burden, the court must take, must take all reasonable measures necessary to ensure public access. Lack of access to a single hearing, suppression, or even a portion of a single hearing, voir dire, is enough to mandate reversal and a new trial. So in my opinion, Judge Dustin Howell did not reach the burden that is imposed upon him to restrict public a- to restrict access to the public. Remember, this is not a burden for the public. This is a burden that the judge must actually meet. The judge did not do this. Judge gods tend to think that they can do anything that they want to and that we have to just capitulate to them. That whenever they say something, we have to bow down to them and worship them. But actually, according to, to our Constitution and other things, he must reach a burden or else he is in defiance of the Constitution, of the background and legal standards, and also of the open court doctrine. In my opinion, the evidence is clear and convincing against Judge Howell. Consequently, Judge Howell should be reprimanded for violating the right of the people of Texas. And a lawsuit that's been filed, I believe that there's six or eight people that are filing a lawsuit against Judge Dustin Howell, has nothing to do with with the two litigants or the uh, the attorney for the opposing counsel. Nothing to do with that. The rights of the people of Texas have been violating. Violated. His actions were so egregious that a lawsuit has been filed against him for his actions. Surely the State Commission of Judicial Conduct does not approve of his actions. If you want the public to trust the judicial system, it is obligatory of you to exercise your duty promptly regarding this judge. So what I decided to do in order to give additional proof, because you know, no matter what you file with the State Commission of Judicial Conduct, they just don't have enough proof. They just they just can't see it. They don't, you know, the proof is not um, not clear enough. So what I actually do is I have uh, live video, why I have recorded video of the abusive judge God, Dustin Howell, threatening everyone with contempt of court, including first um, uh, the the litigant and and then also to the entire court watcher group of people. Also put out a video here about the Texas Bill of Rights, how the Texas Bill of Rights provides us access to the courts. And uh, a third video is unjust judge Dustin Howell conducts a star chamber hearing and violates the open court doctrine. These are all available at the YouTube um, links that are, that are listed here. These are all my opinion. I am not an attorney, so you can't take me as like, oh, they always tell you, you're not, you're not an attorney. How can you opine on these things? Well, I am a citizen. I am a person. I am allowed to read case law for myself. I'm allowed to read our constitution. We do not have to have the priestly class of the attorneys interpret everything for us. So then at the end, how did you hear about the State Commission on Judicial Conduct? You can put down the State Bar, another agency, news media, attorney, friend. If you click others, just say, hey, I visited Jeff Morgan's YouTube channel, and he showed me how to do this. You have the ability to request that the commission maintain your confidentiality. Now, I don't check this. I want my name to be out there. So I did put my name out here right now, and I also put the date of my complaint. I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to refill in the rest of the, um, the, the boxes, and then I'm going to go ahead and submit it so that you can see that portion as well. Okay, coming back to the uh, complaint and the submission of it, you will, I'm authorizing the commission to investigate my complaint against a Texas judge. I am not a robot. I need to make sure to, to click that. The, the CAPTCHA, I guess, is going to come up. I actually hate these CAPTCHAs. I hope it works. Okay, not a robot. And now I'm going to go ahead and submit. And it will give you the idea, This it will give you the, the message that they have um, thank you for contacting us. We will get in touch with you as soon as possible. Now, they will normally get in contact with you via email. Um, I put my email down there, and I expect to get 
uh, contacted by them. Once again, the State Commission on Judicial Conduct, for the most part, is pretty worthless organization from my perspective. I have very rarely seen them actually do anything, even when they know they should be doing something. They just somehow, they, they, they don't have the guts or something or the backbone or the ability. I don't know what it is. You know, whenever they rebu rebuke somebody, they must have done something pretty terrible. Uh, it just, it just, it's crazy to me what, what they do. So anyway, but I will give an update to this. Um, the other bad thing is, is that the State Commission on Judicial Conduct, even though they should promptly be getting back in touch with you and everything, they will probably get back in touch with me about this within a couple of days. But generally speaking, it's about a year before they actually come up with a decision. And once they come up with a decision, um, which will probably be against you because you know the judge of course cannot do anything bad right then you have 30 days if you want to to submit additional information and file for a reconsideration now looking at the reconsideration that i saw earlier reconsiderations I've, to be honest with you most of the public is just realizes this the state commission judicial conduct is likely a joke um so this is the commission activity and you look at fiscal year 2018 2019 2020 2021 um, so these reconsiderations, out of 59 reconsiderations, one was granted. In 2019, out of 46 reconsiderations, two were granted. Out of 19 reconsiderations in uh, 2020, one was granted. Um, out of 37 reconsiderations in 2021, thus far, zero were granted. So I would still say you've got to keep filing. Um, unfortunately, this is the reality that we deal with. And perhaps we need to be talking with our legislators about this, about the activity here. One of the biggest problems that we have is with the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. That's why we don't trust the judiciary. The, judici the State Commission on Judicial Conduct appears to cover for the judiciary, and especially in family law situations. They will say, well, we have, must give the judge discretions. This is not what we're looking at right now. We want, we have seen abuse of judges all over the state. Uh, I know that there are a number of people that are recording things. I know that I've been in courtrooms personally and I've witnessed it with my own eyes. Uh, so this is something that we need to do and I would urge you and encourage you uh, to file complaints against judges with the State Commission on Judicial Conduct, even if it goes nowhere, because they need to know and our legislators need to know that the State Commission on Judicial Conduct has been really, really abysmal in a lot of their responses and that the judges that we have have caused us to not even have confidence by and large in the entire third branch of government. Anyway, that's a quick tutorial. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again. Thank you.